Today on Judge Faith, helping someone get their education can sometimes cost you in the end. She had a student loan mm -hmm. that you co-signed for, and the agreement was what exactly? She would make a $50 payment a month, just did not keep the interest out the way. So you were in school in 2006. I sure did. Mm -hmm. It's now 2014. Are you what they call a professional student? I wish I was. Yes, no. Yes. And later, he claims that his former tenants used his house as an animal shelter. And I knew that there was supposed to be three dogs on the premises. I was never agreeing to a boarding house. What do you do for a living? You say you're a transporter? I transport rescue What does animals. that mean? That means I pick them up from shelters. So it's possible that there could have been more than just your three dogs in the home or a night point. or two here and there, yes. Faith Jenkins. Her distinguished legal career began when she graduated first in her law school class. She quickly became a tough New York City prosecutor and then a preeminent legal analyst on cable news. And now she's the judge in her own courtroom. Her cases are real and her rulings are final. She is Judge Faith. Plaintiff Lamont Jones says he helped the defendant by co-signing for her student loan, only to be stuck with the bill when she didn't finish school. He is suing for a refund of a student loan. Defendant Ronell Freeman says she doesn't owe because she's still in college and her loans are being deferred. She's countersuing for emotional distress. Remain seated and come to order. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, we have Jones versus Freeman. Thank you, Barbara. Lamont Jones. Yes, ma'am. You are suing the defendant, Ronnell Freeman. Yes, ma'am. For $9,632 for the repayment of a college loan. That's correct. This was her student loan, That's correct? Her, yes. Okay, and you're saying that she owes you that amount? That's correct. And you are countersuing, ma'am, for $3,000 for mm -hmm. emotional distress. Mm -hmm. We will start with you, Mr. Jones. Why don't you tell me what's going on here? My cousin came to me. She asked me would I, I help her with a loan, a co-sign a loan for her. And I said, yeah, you know what I'm saying, because I'm a family-oriented type of guy. So Were the two of you close? Yeah, we was real close, you know what I'm saying, especially after her brother, which, you know, my cousin had passed away, you know what I'm saying? She, mm -hmm. she started calling me her brother, her little brother and everything. So at that time, I'm like, okay, I got you. It's nothing, you know what I'm saying? So we did the loan, and I'm just, I just want to see her do, you know, do cool in life. Well, how old are you? How old am I now? Mm -hmm. I'm 35. Okay, so back then you were 26 years old? Probably, yeah, yes. So you co-signed for her student loan for how much? It was uh, 8000 Okay, I mean, that's a lot. Were you in school at the time? No, nah, I had a full-time job. Okay, that's still a big responsibility for a 26-year-old to take upon themselves. That, that it is. Well, what month. was the agreement between the two of you? She had a student loan mm -hmm. that you co-signed for, and the agreement was what exactly? That she would start making, she would make a $50 payments a month just to not keep the interest out the way. Okay, and but, what was the agreement of, about when she would pay the loan back? Because the loan isn't due, it's a student loan. She was in school at the time. When she, you know, when she had graduated, or, you know, after the loan had took place. But since she didn't finish school, she quit going to school. So this is where everything comes in at. Okay, so she quit going to school and you say they started calling you. Yes. The agreement was that she would pay the loan back in full when? I've been paying it back in either way it goes. When I was out of school, I had health problems. My doctor put me on bed rest. I was on bed rest for over a year. I did go back to work for about six months. And unfortunately, it, my health started declining again. So I had to get off of work for another year. Um, since then, I'm still in school. I work part-time. Um, Was and the I, loan deferred at some point? It's still deferred. What happened, because he says the loan came due. It did. When I was out of school, when I was on bed rest. So we, you took a break from school. How long? Um, about a year, and I have the deferment um, form that he did sign, too. Well, this was... You, so you were in school in 2006. I sure did. Mm -hmm. It's now 2014. And I have two more Are classes Are you a professional left. student? Are you what they call a professional student? I wish I was. Yes, no. she is. Because it's been, it's been a number of years. What are you getting your degree in? Um, uh, yeah, tell us. <laughs> no, I, no, I just want to know what you're pursuing Bachelor's your degree in. Bachelor's in Science and Healthcare Management. And when are, when are you scheduled to graduate? December 22nd of this year. Of this year? Oh, so mm -hmm. just a few months away. Well, you know what? I had health problems. I had to keep taking breaks. My okay. doctor would and take me off. And, okay. you know, my condition, you know, it's not worth me dying over. When I get too stressed out, it's like, uh, it's time to slow down and take care of me. 
you know, when this all was going on, I was a staffing manager. I was also going to school full time and I also have three children. I had children at 17 years old, so I refused to be on aid and just sit up and just do nothing with my life. Yeah, I refuse. Yeah. And I have something. children who are looking at me as their leader and kids in the community that have kids at a young age. But you're on the There's no reason for anybody to stop. No, I did not have any credit, because I never felt the need to have any credit at that time. Anything I can play, pay with, yes, I would pay with. I had a checking account and all that other stuff. I thought I was set. Here's the issue. There's obviously a lot of history between the two of you and with everything that you've been dealing with the last several years. But you, you took out this loan, mm -hmm. right? And at some point in your complaint, you say that because you had to take breaks from school, I mean, you know, these agencies, they're not, they want their money. I get and that. And so they start, they start calling you because you co-signed on, co -sign on the loan. And, and as a co-signer on a loan, mm -hmm. he is just as responsible as you are for the loan. That was a big decision you made at 26 years old to bind yourself to an $8,000 student loan for someone else. It was a very nice thing to do, but I don't know if you thought it all the way through because when someone says, I'll pay this back as soon as I finish school, you don't know when that's going to be. And so here we are, seven years later, eight years later, she's almost there, but that was the agreement. Coming up on Judge Faith, helping out on her student loan may cost him in the end. That's the same thing. If you don't pay your bills on your rent, they gonna, they gonna evict you. What you gonna tell your landlord? I have some more um, too. I, I can't pay. And later, this landlord wonders how they could let things get so smelly. I don't know how anybody could live in a house with that smell. It was like hazardous. Plaintiff Lamont Jones says he helped the defendant by co-signing for her student loan, only for him to be stuck with a bill when she didn't finish school. Defendant Ronnell Freeman says she doesn't know because she's still in college and claims her loan is being deferred. You paid the loan off. Yeah, I paid the loan off, but the Tell me how that happened. What, that Do you guy... have proof that you paid the loan yes, off? Yes, ma'am. May the... I see that? You don't dispute that he paid off the loan, right? He didn't have to do it like this. He could have got off the loan. I had no idea that he even paid the How loan. How could he get off the loan? We, I did contact the lawyer. Ever since I contacted the lawyer, because I am in school and it's in deferment, they have not called me at all. They never called they me after right I got Well, this was, loan. listen, let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. He's he's receiving letters from collection agencies. They never did that to me because I got the lawyer. I don't, but listen to what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. This loan went into collection. Yeah. And a collection agency is contacting him and it is affecting his credit. And so he paid off $9,632 in it, January of this yes, year, right? Every day, if I wouldn't have did it, it was going up in interest like a, like $75 or something every day. Just wow. So, you, my so I know report. what you're saying that they should not have been contacting him because you had gotten back in school and the loan should have been deferred. You shouldn't be paying it off until you finish. But, but for whatever reason, on there. For, whatever, for whatever reason, they did not recognize your deferment when you him. took a break. Well, so here's my, here's my question for you, Mr. Jones. Yes, did you have a conversation with her before you paid this off? Did you tell her you were paying it off? Yeah, I told her. Like, I, cause I kept calling her. She wouldn't, like, she would answer her phone calls. She was like, well, I'm at work. I'll call you back. So she wouldn't call me back. I text her. She'll text me back and say, well, um, I'm on it like last time. I'm on it. I'm on it. The issue is the agreement between the two of you because you've now filed a lawsuit. You want her to pay you back for the student loan. And the issue is you say in your complaint she agreed that you would co-sign for this loan so she can get a student loan. And the agreement was that she would pay the loan back in full after she finished school. And I'm sorry. So when do you plan on up. paying this money back? I've been paying a little bit at a time. A hundred dollars here, you know, I was How much has she off. paid you? She hasn't paid me anything. It goes directly and to... That's the same thing. If you don't pay your bills on your rent, they're going to they gonna evict you. What you going to tell your landlord? I'm going to have some more, um, too. I, I can't pay. There's no question you owe the money. Mm -hmm. The question is, when when is it due? Although the agreement was that you would pay back this loan in full when you graduated, two things have happened. One, it's been over seven years. And number two, you defaulted on the loan. And you admit to owing him the money. So it's like pay now or pay later, but it's been long enough. So I'm going to order you to pay him back. As you know, the statutory maximum in my court is $5,000. I'm going to order the defendant to pay you $5,000. Just before the Appreciate it.
plaintiff Michael Weisberg says that after one year of renting his property to the defendants, they vacated the home and left his house a pigsty. He is suing for damages to his rental property. Defendants Margaret Hall and Jeff Gee say that the plaintiff was a greedy landlord and that when they left the house, it was in great condition. Michael Weisberg? Yes, Your Honor. You are suing the defendants Margaret Howe and Jeff Gee? Yes, ma'am. For $1,952. They are your former tenants, and you say they caused some damage to your property? That's correct, Your Honor. And you are countersuing for $5,000, $1,800 for an electric bill, and $3,200 for emotional distress? Yes, yes Your Honor. Okay, I'll start with you, Mr. Weisberg. Tell me about your case. About a year and a half ago, I bought this property as a rental property, Your Honor. It was in brand new condition. It was just completely renovated, brand new carpet, paint, new appliances. It was beautiful. Rented it out to these tenants. Um, after the first month or so, I, there was an issue with an air conditioner. I sent out an air, air conditioning repair person to fix the AC unit. And he called me back to tell me the repair was fixed and that the house smelt like urine. After a month? After a month. Did you enter into a lease agreement with them? I did. Do you have a copy of I that? I do have that, Your How Honor. How much was the rent every month? It was $1,375 a month. And how much did they pay in security deposit? Uh, $1,775. Okay. They paid an extra $400 for a pet security deposit for three, three dogs. And was the house in excellent condition when you moved in? It was in fair condition. It had been renovated, but it had been renovated what looked like by three-year-olds who didn't know how to paint. paint so it didn't have off. a great paint job. The paint was peeling off almost instantly. Report but you signed they, a lease, so you obviously liked something you saw about the home. Right. It was decent enough at the time, yes, ma'am. I have a move-in report that they signed, and it also, on Your Honor, shows when they moved out the condition of the property as well. How long did they live in your house? One year, Your One Honor. One year, okay. Let me look at how the home looked, you say, before they moved in. That's the living room. New carpet, new blinds, new paint. Is that how the living room looked when you moved in? Yes, yes. ma'am, it did. Okay. That's the kitchen, Your Honor. New appliances in there. Well, is, this, is this how the kitchen looked for the yes. most part? Yes, ma'am, it did. Okay, all right. So a, a month later, uh, a repairman goes into the home to make a repair for the air conditioner? Except it wasn't a month later, it was the day we moved in. The air conditioner was not working the day we moved in. You say at some point a repairman goes into the home, makes some observations and comes back and reports those observations to you. Tell me about that. The repair person says, going through the house and checking the control unit says, there are pets stacked up in cages. He said that the house smells like urine, like there's pets, like they're boarding animals in the house. There was crates in the living room with pets in there. And I knew that there was supposed to be three dogs on the premises. I was never agreeing to a boarding house. Coming up on Judge Faith, neither side is afraid to point out who's to blame. It wasn't until later that I found out that Margaret was actually running a, a shelter for rescue animals. Your Honor, we just wanted to get away from him. To be completely honest, based on those photos, I'm sure he was very happy you wanted to get away, sir. Plaintiff Michael Weisberg is suing his former tenants for damages to his rental property. Defendants Margaret Hall and Jeff Gee say that they left the home in great condition. The repair person says, he said that the house smells like urine, like there's pets, like they're boarding animals in the house. Okay, so what was going on? We That's had, not true. We had one dog in a crate because we didn't want him to jump all over the repairman. So He's, how many pets did you have total? We th had three. Just the three dogs that he was aware of. Your Honor, if he there. saw crates, I am a transporter. I use crates in my business. The garage door did not work properly. So there were a few times where I needed to move them out of my truck and I had nowhere else to put them, so I put the empty crates in the living room. Mm -hmm. I'm the sorry? The living room is carpeting. That's yes. not tiled. And they're clean, empty and cages. The, and there and was, so when they're there saying there's no... urine, it's getting on the carpet. You paid a pet deposit? Yes. For each of the dogs? We paid $400 total additional deposit for the dogs. When I finally got into the house, because I had asked repeatedly time after time to come see the house, and I was always denied access, it was always refused to me by, well, one of them wasn't home. They wanted both to be there. It wasn't a good time. Wasn't Why did you want to go in and inspect? Because of what the repairman told you? Because I was concerned about what I was getting, what I was hearing, especially when the second person came out of the second repairman, mm -hmm. and he said, it's atrocious. I can't even be in the house. The smell is so bad. When repairman. was that? 
when they replaced the air conditioner. That so what was the issue? What was going on? We... Would you not let him come in and inspect the property? Y what was going on? Your Honor, I was working out of town at the time, mm -hmm. three or four or five nights a week. My girlfriend Meg did not feel comfortable letting somebody in the house that she didn't know. He's the landlord. Yes, you you are under a contract with him leasing his home. And in the contract, it says that if he gives you adequate notice, he can come in and inspect. So it's not about a stranger coming into the home. This is the person you have made a contractual obligation with coming into the home. What do you think was really going on? I think they were boarding pets. I think she was having the house and staging animals until she could find other shelters That's or places. Even, what do you do for a living? You say you're a transporter? Tra I transport rescue What does animals. that mean? That means I pick them up from shelters. They either go to boarding facilities, not my home, other boarding facilities. So it's possible that there could have been more than just your three dogs in the home for at some point. For a night point. or two here and there, yes. But no, by no means were their cages mm -hmm. stacked up anywhere. So what happens when you finally get in? When I finally get in, which was appalling, it was the day that they were supposed to be moving out. Mm -hmm. So they gave you adequate notice. They gave me adequate notice. I went there and met them at the property. And as soon as I opened the door, <laughs> it just came over me, the smell of urine. I've never, I don't know how anybody could live in a house with that smell, it was, it was bad, extremely bad, like, like hazardous. I'm Maybe you're immune to it because <laughs> this is urine to the point that you would think maybe somebody would try to cover it up when you go to see the house. Did you leave the home in disrepair? No, no. You left in it fact, clean? We left it yes. fairly like clean. We, we, have, we do have pictures we to have show that as well. To prove it. Okay, so I will look at your photos first, Mr. Weisberg. Mm. That's the kitchen. Is that how you left the kitchen? That's not how I left that room at all. So after you left, you think someone else came in and threw some stuff on the floor, left some things on the cabinets, threw some trash on the floor so he could take some photos, so he could have them to come into court? By no show means me. am I saying that, no. There's the living room. You can see the pet stains, the poop on the, on the carpet. What they approached me the with carpet? the smell to say that they were going to get a steam clean machine exactly. to what clean the carpet. Exactly. What are you looking at? That looks... What room is this? That's the living room. Living room. Mr. Correct. Your Honor, we just wanted to get away from him. We wanted to. We wanted to split. Well, to, as fast to be as completely honest, based on those photos, I'm sure he was very happy you wanted to get away, sir. <laughs> You'll take a look that I actually even modified when they were having repeated troubles in making the rent on time, where there was bounce checks late fees that we're assessing. Were there issues with you paying the rent on time? Occasionally, and yes, we did pay the late fees once the rent was paid at that point in time. He also threatened to let himself in the house, whether I was home or not, because he wanted his inspection. Knowing because that he, was he has out of town. a right to come in and inspect That's the right. home as it's written in the lease, ma'am. It's amazing that a, an AC repair person can get into the house, but the owner of the property can't get in to see the house. That's a great point. What do you have to say about that? Now, Judge Faith rules. They paid how much in security deposit? Seventeen seventy-five. And you had no objection to him keeping seventeen hundred and seventy-five dollars security deposit because you probably knew that there, there were was, damages there was some in the damage. home. Yes, yes. Because that what usually happens out. is seventeen hundred and seventy-five dollars is a lot of money. So you know, in order for you to let him keep that security deposit, you knew there were damages to his home. So on your counterclaim for emotional distress, zero. On your counterclaim for eighteen hundred dollars for the electric bill, zero. My judge in this case, my judgment in this case, based on the evidence presented to me, is for the plaintiff. I'm ordering you to pay him $1,951.98. Just before the plaintiff. Good luck. If you or someone you know has a dispute, don't take the law into your own hands. Let Judge Faith roll on it for you. To submit your case, go to judgefaith.com and tell us your story. See you in court.